This metal door is 83 inches tall, 43 and 3 quarters inches wide. How would you replace this? Would you even know where to start? I'm going to show you. Here's what we do. First off, this thing is completely trash, as you can see. There's no saving it. With metal doors, they come in standard sizes, but you need to match the hinge locations. We would have to measure these hinge locations to get the same door. But look how crappy these hinges are. Those locations don't look secure. I am going to use a continuous hinge, and I have a video on how to install a continuous hinge. So let's measure this thing. It's 43 inches and 3 quarters wide. That means it's a 44 inch door. The height is 83 inches, so it's called a 7 foot tall door. Let's go get that at a local commercial steel door supplier. They don't want a deadbolt on this. They just want a panic bar with a locking lever, and we'll put a slide bolt on the inside as well. First thing I did was resecure that threshold that was flopping around so that is now nice and flat and secure. Now I attach the continuous hinge to the frame. I just used some of the self tapping sheet metal screws and I put the center of that geared hinge right on the edge of the frame. You don't always have to pre drill these, but it's a lot easier if you do. You want to get at least eight screws into that frame. Test your continuous hinge, maybe give it some WD-40 or some PB blaster, make sure it's moving freely, you don't want any binding. Now you have to set the door in there, so I use some wedges and some shims because we want even gaps around the door so we can attach it to the continuous hinge. I use my 5-in-1 tool, my little pry bar, put wedges in there, get all the gaps set just right, and then I want to put in four of the self-tapping screws into the door side of the continuous hinge. You won't know if your door is working or not until you open it, so four screws will hold it, but if you have to move it, you still have plenty of extra holes. So let's take out the wedges and hope the door works without rubbing. And everything is moving freely, it closes properly, there's no binding, no rubbing, no screeching. Let's put in the rest of our screws. I put in six to eight of the self-tapping sheet metal screws, and then we have these through bolts. You have holes for these through bolts, I recommend at least six. Drill these out with a 3 8 inch drill bit, and it gives you this little center punch here to get the hole started. Whenever I'm doing this, I bring fresh drill bits, especially the 3 8 inch bit. Take the female end of the through bolt, put it on the inside of the door, give it a little tap. Sometimes they'll stay, sometimes I put a piece of tape on them, and then you go on the other side and thread in the male end, and once it connects, it goes together very easily. Uh, just don't go too deep and dent the door. Once I have six of the through bolts in and working, I install the lever lock and the panic bar. I have a video on how to do that. Then I reinstall their door closer. I reinstall their alarm devices and I install a heavy duty slide bolt so they can lock that up at night and that will be very difficult to get into. Lastly, when I know that everything is working perfectly, I tap on the protective covers over the hinge so nothing can be unscrewed. Once these go on, they don't come off without an angle grinder, so make sure you're good. And remember, it's not just about being able to do this. It's about being able to get all the materials, know what to do, and then do it. You can do that. They will pay you whatever you ask for. Trust me, they never say no to me.